that would make me rethink my stance on it. I didn't realize it was nearly that long. A state senator says law enforcement should reevaluate the use of DUI checkpoints after our investigation found they rarely lead to driving under the influence arrests. But the Tennessee Highway Patrol and Mothers Against Drunk Driving are standing behind the enforcement effort. The Tennessee Highway Patrol stopped more than 28,000 cars statewide at DUI checkpoints in 2016, and they filed 157 DUI charges as a result. That's according to state records. And that is fewer DUI charges than actual checkpoints, an arrest rate of less than 1%. Meanwhile, THP filed more than 1,700 non-DUI charges at those sobriety checkpoints. That's according to the agency statistics. Nate Morabito found out why the numbers staggered a state lawmaker. Police and even advocates say the roadblocks work. Yeah, once again, they say this is not just about arrests. They say the primary purpose is to deter impaired driving. The Centers for Disease Control reports research shows checkpoints work but some aren't convinced. I think they can be effective. State Senator John Lumberg is a longtime believer in sobriety checkpoints. It seems that uh, all logic would say that that would work. But then we told the Senate Judiciary Committee member what we discovered. Wow. An incredibly low number of DUI arrests. That surprises me. At those DUI checkpoints. That would make me rethink my stance on it. I didn't realize it was nearly that low. The numbers aren't just low in our region. Records show statewide roughly 0.6% of all people stopped at DUI checkpoints are actually arrested for DUI. We found you're more likely to drive away with one of five other kinds of tickets at THP checkpoints. I am surprised frankly also that law enforcement would continue to do that if that effective rate is that low. I would think they would have a better chance of catching drunk drivers, um, following people or being on the side of the road. The numbers out of Johnson City show police arrested more people in 2016 when they took part in targeted patrols. But Mothers Against Drunk Driving argues those saturation patrols are more effective when combined with sobriety checkpoints. The organization says research shows Highly publicized checkpoints help deter drinking and driving, telling us in a statement, they're among the most effective drunk driving deterrents. We believe they do work, and we do believe they are successful. THP Lieutenant Bill Miller is certain if you remove sobriety checkpoints from the agency's arsenal of enforcement efforts, more drunk drivers would get behind the wheel. Because they do not have that, that uh, fear that we're going to be out there to arrest them and take them to jail for violating the law and putting everyone at risk. Agencies advertise the checkpoints in advance, hoping people will get the message. Go over here to the bison side of my car. Lieutenant Miller says if troopers arrest just one person for DUI, the effort is a success. If you look at the numbers, that's, that's, that's really not a fair representation of how the sobriety checkpoints work because there's no way that you're going to be able to gauge the outreach that you have as far as how many people decide to not drive and decide to download an app on their phone and take a sober ride. Is there a deterrent effect? I'd give that some merit, but if the results are 3,300 go through and you've got seven charges, then I don't know the effectiveness. Senator Lumberg remains puzzled by both our local and statewide discoveries. You kind of shattered my expectations of what they would have been. In a way, he's glad the numbers are so low perhaps a sign fewer people are driving drunk. But on the other hand, he can't help but wonder if officers should reevaluate their efforts. I think it's also a discussion that I'm hopeful that law enforcement is having to go, you know, is it effective use of manpower? Lieutenant Miller says THP constantly evaluates areas for improvement, calling this a healthy conversation the agency welcomes. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration rates publicized sobriety checkpoints as the most effective enforcement activity for deterrence. Take a look at this 2015 report. It cites a 2012 CDC review of 15 studies that found these checkpoints reduce alcohol-related fatal crashes by 9% with additional data analysis finding checkpoints reduce overall alcohol-related crashes by 17% and all crashes by 10 to 15%. That agency also reports checkpoints are the most costly, saying the typical checkpoint costs between $5,000 to $7,000. But MAD says communities save between $6 and $23 per every dollar invested 
from alcohol-related crashes. Orbito, Nate, thank you. In addition to several traffic violations, THP's checkpoints in 2016 resulted in 20 open container charges, 10 felony drug charges, and 143 misdemeanor drug charges. You can find a breakdown of all the charges tonight. We've got that information posted on WJHL.com.